A lifelong resident of Aspen, John Doyle began carving wood after an inspirational trip to Alaska. Working with various woods, Doyle not only creates elaborate and exquisitely detailed totem poles, but also explores Maori images in large-scale carvings. I, I grew up kind of around the state of Colorado. Went to high school and college up in Idaho, and my mother and little sister lived here. She was going to high school here, and I started coming here for summer and Christmas breaks. And after I left school, I came home for the summer, and I never left. I studied art and architecture in college at the University of Idaho, and I went to Alaska for a full summer when I was 23. And I met a friend of my father's up there who not only helped me find employment, but he was a totem pole carver. A couple years later, it was my first off season in the spring living up in Little Annie Basin. And a friend of mine suggested, he had seen the, these photos that I'd taken up in Alaska and knew I had art experience. And he said, you should carve a totem pole for your cabin. So I ended up going to the library, got some library books, bought four flat Stanley chisels from Ace Hardware. And uh, like I said, I had, I think, two months of free time on my hands and sat down and carved a totem pole. And I ended up selling the first one uh, kind of on a fluke. And uh, I got a pretty good sized paycheck and I had been bartending and waiting tables. Uh, the classic ski bum lifestyle, and uh, I said no more. The Northwest Coast Indians, that's where totem poles were basically born. Most of them told a story. They were, I think most of all, family crests. They were also uh, mortuary columns dedicated to uh, fallen elders. Uh, but for the most part, they were status symbols. The chief who had the most totem poles, obviously, was the chief who had enough resources to dedicate artisans to crafting poles for him. How I create my carvings, uh, the standard scenario there is I get introduced to a family, or they call me. Somehow we get connected and they basically choose one character for each family member, so it becomes a family crest for them. Once I meet the family, the process, uh, they choose the specific characters they want for each member of their family, and then I put that down on paper and arrange it. Usually the heaviest creatures on the bottom and the lighter creatures are towards the top. The tools I use are, for the most part, hand tools. Uh, I do use an electric chainsaw from time to time just to get large chunks out, get things going, but for the most part, I, it's just mallet and chisel. The wood I use for the totems is local wood. It's Engelman spruce. Uh, ironically, the very first log I chose was Engelman spruce and it worked really well. It's nice and soft and it grows quite large around here. The height varies really from, uh, as far as totem poles go, from I'd say, the shortest one I've done was probably four feet up to 32 feet is my tallest. The average is usually around 15 to 20 feet. Uh, the, the standard 15 to 20 foot totem pole takes, I would say, from meeting the client to completion, it's usually between six months to a year. Actual carving time from when I get the drawings complete until it's done is usually four to five months.
I started living on the backside in 1988. My wife and I were able to purchase the land uh, a little over two years ago that my cabin sits on. And the place I like to work the most, actually, is up at my place outdoors. I think I got the ski gene from my dad and the art gene from my mom. And my dad died when I was quite young, but uh, he was a skier. He visited Aspen in the early 50s. So I've kind of taken it upon myself to, to ski in his stead, to get as many turns as possible. Living on the backside was definitely part of, of becoming an artist. There's no doubt about it. Being able to ski as much as I do I think helps me maintain that a sense of awe and just the, the fortunate circumstances I've had. When I get a chance, I like to, to carve something that's fun for me. Not that totems aren't, but uh, it's, I have a little more freedom with, with other subject matter. You know, I've got some pretty unusual taste carving gargoyles and got a large dragonfly hanging in my living room that's about seven feet across. The Maori stuff, that's just something I really enjoy doing. Just something about the tattooed faces just struck me as being just wildly beautiful. It also lends itself to large scale. I, I enjoy carving large scale stuff where uh, people have to step back from it and, you know, really take it all in.